I wanted to make this video today about the importance of benchmarking. So we do a lot of hiring out of South Africa. And one of the challenges sometimes within South Africa is uninterrupted power supplies, as well as good internet connectivity, especially from a remote environment when we're all remote. Now, we've got some incredibly talented people from South Africa. But in the instance of this one person, she started or she was going to start, but then it turned out the internet was problematic. And then as a consequence, I said, okay, why don't you whilst you're getting your internet issues resolved, get involved, go through some of the onboarding forms and make yourself generally useful. So I think her internet is due to come in on Monday. Now, during that time, the last week, the general consensus has been that I've heard or we've heard very little from her. She has been doing or watching training videos, but generally quiet and not enough insight to understand the value that she's driving. And I've since said that, well, in that time, because we hire continuously, Pearl Lemon gets over 50 applications a day, that we've found someone else and she's more than likely to not get the role. And she said, oh, but I was due to start on Monday. And I said, sure, but we get over 50 applications per day. And I have benchmarks, internal benchmarks, as well as literal benchmarks for what a successful candidate tends to look like. And what I want to communicate today is that as much as you can, everywhere you can, as often as you can, it's so, so important across all of the work that you do that you benchmark, okay? And it's such a, it's such, it's taken me longer than I would have liked to have understood the importance of what that actually means in practice, because I think that the concept of benchmarking isn't new to people, but what does that actually mean? Let's benchmark ourselves against the competition. So they appear third on Google. We want to appear second. Currently, we're 15th. Okay, but is that really a benchmark? The, 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 the best way to ultimately set benchmarks is to, and it goes and relates to that adage of, as long as I am 1% better than I was yesterday, then I'll know that ultimately the compound effect of that will be incredible. So there's multiple areas within which you want to include benchmarks across your organization within business because it will transform your ability to achieve results. So bench, I'm going to give you a series of examples, right? Just to communicate what it is that I mean. So benchmark number one, at the time you take on a client, hey, Mr. Client, What's your current revenue? 10,000 pounds a month. Great. Benchmark number one. Okay, great. You're paying us to help you generate more inquiries. Hey, Mr. Client, how many clients do you currently, if you're an SEO agency, generate through organic search? Zero. Simple. Three months pass. Hey, Mr. Client, as a consequence of our involvement, how many organic inquiries are you generating now? Benchmark. Hey, Mr. Client, through ultimately other areas that we've improved, has the revenue number increased? Even whilst, for example, the lead gen number might not yet have increased because you also can influence their top line revenue by making changes on an actual client website. And that value doesn't get captured without actually benchmarking where they were to start because as an ordinary part of, for example, SEO, you might recommend or you might improve page speed and that might or probably will have a consequence on, for example, a paid media campaign for a Shopify store that will lead to better ROI from their ads. And then that ultimately reward or that, rec that, 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 yeah, that, 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 that reward, that recognition will go to the paid media team even though it originated from, for example, a technical SEO team who installed a plugin to help minify some bloated CSS as a consequence made the page load a second faster, which in the paid media space, when you're running high velocity ads can make a big difference. But without doing or without having a benchmark, you can then, or you can't then attribute proper value. And it's not just there that benchmarking applies, right? And that's one example of it. What about the recruitment process? 
So again, referring back to this applicant who applied, let's call her Jane. Jane applied, and it's interesting that one of the things or one of the ways in which it was easier for me to understand her level was because we get 50 applicants a day. That's 1,500 applications a month. They go through a recruitment process. And somehow she got through where Jane shouldn't have perhaps got through or she showed a lot of promise and then it quickly faded. But across the course of an interview or across the course of any process, there's different things that you benchmark for. And that's where a continuous series of benchmarks becomes important. And what's also powerful is to give the people around you benchmarks of what success looks like okay so when for example people apply to pearl lemon we give them examples of what great applicants actually look like and i don't mean physically i mean application forms i mean great videos so that they can see what it takes to be successful at our company and these are the types of things that i don't see given often enough when it comes to any of the actual recruitment processes that I often see. People get, for example, an interview form, they get perhaps a questionnaire, they get this, they get that, but they don't get shown, here's a sample resume, here's a sample technical aptitude test score, here are the things, practical real world examples that successful candidates tend to do. So one example was that we had a candidate who came in and I'll always recall that when she introduced herself and how she'd like to add value to the company, she sent a 26 minute voice note, if memory serves. It blew everyone else's perception of what success looked like away. We had another, one of the top performers in the team, Usman, he at the end of this month produced a 30 page PDF, beautifully designed, documenting all of the value that he'd added across the course of the last month. We have had people send in highly edited and pretty impressive videos demonstrating the value they can add to the company and what it is that they can exactly contribute. There's been various manifestations of this and what you want to do to enhance the overall ability of your team is to share with them standards, share with them past successes so that it's easier for people to say, oh, so that's what success looks like. Oh, so that's the bar. What tends to happen is that we say candidates need to be hardworking or what we tend to say is that great we would expect you to see 25% growth if we're talking on the client side, but find out where people are at and then show them where they need to be if you're recruiting and find out where clients are and then ultimately keep tracking that as you implement things to see where they end up. And then you can begin in both cases to improve the general standard of people that come in because they understand what success looks like. And the thing is, is that the more practical that you can make it, the less abstract it becomes. And it's really made for those people who are underdogs, the people that with a little bit of the right nudging could produce outsized results. And that's just one of my frustrations when it comes to performance not being up to par within teams, but for the wrong reason, because the team or the individual hasn't been given the opportunity to understand what success looks like. And don't get me wrong, we still got many problems with our process and it's something that we're continuously in the process of changing. But I just spoke to our account manager now, Temi, and I said to her, why don't we go and get ultimately the literal number of organic inquiries where they have that number. And if they don't have that number, maybe we can help them measure that number, the amount of organic inquiries that any client who's starting with us now gets. Because in the end, what they're going to measure our success based upon is since we started with Pearl Lemon, and since we are now here with Pearl Lemon, are we generating more money? Or are we generating more inquiries? And that's something that you need to have true insight over because otherwise you don't know what the actual level of success looks like. And that works on the recruitment side and then it continues on the actual career side. So once people come in, what is a benchmark for success at month three? 
at month six, at month 12, at 18 months, at year two. And and, and these are things you really need to sit down and tease out and, and think about. But the less abstract and the more practical you can make all of these things, as well as measure these things, the more likely you're to be successful. And the huge irony of it is, and this is the crazy thing for me, that when we look at a commercial engagement, when it comes to hiring any service provider, we do we, 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 we do have our own benchmark in our own mind, and we do know our own numbers in our own mind. We typically tend to know it. So if you hire a, for example, cleaner, is a great example. It's, 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 it's actually something that often is a problem that I love her, Daniela, and, and myself, my wife. We will hire cleaners. We have hired cleaners and we've not hired a cleaner successfully because, and this is, a, I, I think, a truism of lots of household or home environments because we haven't benchmarked for a cleaner what our version of success looks like. When we say clean, do we, for example, mean underneath the radiator so that they can capture the dirt there? Or do we mean tops, tables, and surfaces, but nothing inside because we don't want you to rummage inside because that's hands off or that's not allowed. So understanding the differences and giving someone the blueprint to success in so many cases does not happen. It doesn't happen at all. And that's what if we lean into doing more, we're much, much more likely to get an outsized result. So if we take that example of cleaning, think about how it applies to your life in general. Do you have, for example, and and, and then you can actually, I say, do you have, you can actually, so, 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 so I live in countryside Italy. So another example, if we think about and tease this out as to where this might have an impact in any of the level of successes that you have. When it comes to your personal life, why wouldn't you look at your local supermarkets, look at someone who's in a similar position to yourself and think, well, what would a successful person eat, drink, or do? That would be area number one. If you're hiring someone, as we said, with the cleaner example or with a teaching example. So one example, another example again, is I work with Daniela's friend, Julia. She comes and she's helping support me with my journey of learning Italian. And it was my fault that we built up a culture where she would come and we would do lessons here, but she often will travel for her work. But then I didn't say, well, why don't we actually use Zoom to then benchmark ultimately what a successful professional relationship looks like. So that seems quite inane and quite obvious, but what you'll often find is that in multiple areas, you're not giving people a blueprint when they engage into a professional relationship with you. You make assumptions and assumptions make an ass out of you and me. Assumptions lead to a lot of confusion because people misinterpret ultimately what the benchmark is. There's a brilliant book that I read I was talking to, again, now giving you a third example. So example number one is a cleaning example. Example number two is benchmarking what successful communication looks like because I say, okay, great. Let's do our lessons on Zoom. We'll keep those Zoom lessons up to around 20 minutes. We'll share screen. I'll put a countdown clock on so we remain disciplined because she's quite busy when she travels. That's why she's away when we're here. But I began to build benchmarks to build a better communication platform to build a better relationship in terms of Italian lesson learning. And then bucket number three now is when it comes to the recruitment process, as we discussed, benchmarking what successful candidates that tend to do, showing people that during the actual application process, this is an example of a great video. This is an example of a great submission form. This is an example of a great resume. Know that that's a standard to work here. Oh, okay, so I was there, but I see that's there. And actually I'm capable of there. I just need to be told that that was what was required to work here. And that will weed out the weak and ultimately improve the general standard of the candidates that come in through the door. And then bucket number four is looking at the client benchmarks. How many organic inquiries do you receive today? How, what, what is your revenue today? And then you can, what is, what is your page speed? How many keywords do you rank for? Whatever the metric is. And then you can benchmark ultimately what you've achieved or say, cool, that's where you are right now. What is the benchmark for the industry or what is the benchmark that we want to get to? And clients will often tell you that, but then sometimes I'd also say that we want to generate more, but if you can benchmark and quantify, 
where they're at, then you can appropriately quantify what the result of more is. So thinking in terms of these types of numbers and these types of ultimately strategies, it's, it's, it's just going to help with with, with, with with recruitment. It's going to help with fundamentally your relationships. It's going to help in every area of the work that you do. And again, going back to fundamentally your career now, because that's what I was talking about with, with, with Temi. I said, you know, I... I remember when I was working as I was working at Deloitte as part of their graduate part of their internship program in the London office where you rotate between the accounting and tax department back in 2007 I think it was a good old long time ago but I remember that I won the pitching competition when we were pitching potential business ideas and I was noticed by the talent partner as the one to watch when I was there competing. And in that cohort, I was the only art student, English literature, and I also had no financial background. But the way that I was able to win that competition was that I read a book called How to Think Like a CEO, an amazing book. I recommend that you read it. But what I was doing inadvertently when I was looking at that book was looking at, well, this is, if this is how CEOs think, this will get me much closer to their benchmarks of what success looks like. So if I can, if I'm over here and I'm just doing best guess, the book is giving me not best guess, but a, a crude or a very good approximation of what success looks like. So I'm able through some specific changes, able to get much closer to here. And what I did was I introduced myself like everyone else did, but I individually named all of the partners. Hey, Richard, Frank, George, Deepak here. I am da 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 da. And I also then at the end said, thank you. I just wanted to come over and say, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. And I'll wait to hear from you. Those two things using their names, as well as going and giving a handshake to some physical contact. And then I was using names changed. That, that's, that's all it was in that context at that time, back in 2007, because the book gave me an access, a portal to be able to get closer to benchmarking what success looks like. And now when you think about what that means in terms of your career, what are the needs of the business owner? What are their standards for success? How do they operate? And then how can I benchmark my behavior against those ideals of the person that I'm speaking to? How can I walk into their world and present a vision of what already looks like success in their mind? And that's why benchmarking is so important. And that's why we talk about modeling and we talk about mirroring. But what you want to do is turn that into actual real world practical insight strategies and tactics like the handshake, like the name and whatever else that might mean for you. So another thing that we do, if we continue the examples, we ask clients, what medium do you like communication on? We like to use business WhatsApp. And what do you know? The reason that we use business WhatsApp is because a ton of our clients, when they engage with people tend to use WhatsApp and then we tend to send voice notes and that tends to work really productively. And then equally, this has echoes around every aspect of the work that you do. So what I really want you to take away, and it took me, it took me, and there's still gaps with the way that we do it. And there's still things that we're seeking to improve. You know, the recruitment process that I spoke of, it was only literally in the last 48 hours that I realized we didn't have videos that were showing candidates during the application process, videos of past successful applicants. So we uh, we take now some of the people that have been with our company for a while that are at our company and we share the actual application video and say, hey, look, this is an example of someone who has been successful through the interview process. So then it allows people the opportunity to say, wow, you know what? I'm recording a video introduction for Pearl Lemon, but my background you know, I'm a bit f further away than I should be in the background. I'm not front and center. I'm leaning a little bit like this. I have got hair that's totally, totally messed up and I really should sort that. So by doing or allowing people to see what success looks like and to move it from abstract to high impact, the success that you can have with the people that you bring in, the work that you do, the pitches that you can make can transform. So 
really, really get into the world of real tactical infield benchmarking.